so far, there is one name I have left, largely absent from the ancient alien intervention subject, that of infamous occultist, Alistair Crowley. Crowley's practices, his beliefs, writings and philosophies of Thelema, have had a marked impact on numerous individuals across a variety of fields. There are many claims stacked against Crowley's character and agenda connections. Crowley is often described as one of the most evil men to ever live, although these claims are mired in speculation and a degree of contradiction. Additionally, he was known to over-dramatize his own persona. I should note that I don't wish to be misunderstood as defending the man in any way, I am simply trying to be pragmatic. For the purposes of quantifiable research, I will try to avoid the sensationalism and myth surrounding the man, and concentrate on the more salient aspects of his life. Alistair Crowley's association with the English Secret Society, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, is well documented. The Golden Dawn, in turn, had extensive connections with the Theosophical Society and the Thule Society. He founded his own occult society, the Argentumistrum, and eventually rose to become a leader of Ordo Templi Orientis, or OTO. It has been suggested that he worked for British intelligence for many years. Although there is sizable degree of contention about this claim, the evidence supporting the notion is highly compelling. Historian and writer and researcher, Robert W. Sullivan IV, also a 32nd degree Scottish Rite Freemason, Amicable St. John's Lodge No. 25 in Baltimore, Maryland, is on record as saying, Ian Fleming during World War II was in British counterintelligence, things like orchestrating false flag operations, and one of the people he oversaw. One of the persons under his command was none other than Alistair 666 Crowley, who was a double agent also for the British Empire. Believe it or not, when Rudolf Hess flew to England on his botched peace mission, when they put Hess in the Tower of London, who at the time was Hitler's deputy, and Hess himself was fascinated with the occult, Alistair Crowley went to Fleming, and said, Listen, let me interrogate this guy, and I'll conjure some demons, practice some Gosha magic in front of him, and we'll scare this guy half to death. Fleming loved the idea, and went to Churchill with it, but it was ultimately vetoed. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. An interesting book on the subject of Crowley is, Secret Agent 666, by Dr. Richard B. Spence. In his book, Spence further documents Ian Fleming's, agenda figure, British intelligence agent, and creator of James Bond, attempt to involve Crowley in the effort to interrogate the captured Nazi Rudolf Hess. Crowley was also close friends with British intelligence officers, George Langelin and Dennis Wheatley. Langelin is famous for having written the science fiction horror story, The Fly. Wheatley, famous largely for writing adventure and occult novels, such as The Devil Rides Out, also wrote the science fiction novel, Black August. One of Crowley's most noted protégés, Harry Smith, had a profound influence upon Arthur M. Young, of the Round Table Foundation, who directly inspired Robert Temple, when writing the book entitled, The Serious Mystery, a book that ultimately inspired New Age proponents, esoteric researchers and ufologists alike. Within the science fiction genre, Crowley had a huge influence. A list of his fans and protégés would be far too extensive to document, but here are a few notable examples. Graphic novel writer, Alan Moore, once described Crowley as a brilliant scholar. Moore's works include a novel entitled, From Hell, Watchmen, and V for Vendetta. As with the likes of The Matrix, V for Vendetta contains themes and messages, which many alternative knowledge researchers consider relevant. Crowley's work also influenced Argentum Strum member, Austin Osmond Spare, who pioneered much of chaos magic theory and practice. H.P. Lovecraft's work is said to have also influenced aspects of the practice. Those with an interest in chaos magic include Grant Morrison, science fiction and fantasy comic book writer, playwright and occultist. William S. Burroughs, U.S. counterculture figure, alleged CIA asset, and quasi-science fiction author. Pat Mills, comic book writer. And Terry Pratchett, fantasy science fiction author. Clive Barker, man most famous for the Hellraiser film franchise, is noted as being a passionate student of Aleister Crowley and his fellow occultist and magician, William Butler Yeats. Yates' writings led Barker to the Golden Dawn and Crowley. Mike Mignola, creator of the graphic novel Hellboy, adapted to a movie in 2004, envisioned his Hellboy character as spawned by the Thule Society. The book's character, Israel Regardi, was named after the real-life occultist, who also became Crowley's secretary and biographer. Another Crowley protege was former pulp sci-fi writer, L. Ron Hubbard. Hubbard established Dianetics and the Church of Scientology. 
The OT3 teachings of the latter parallel some theosophical teachings. Hubbard's early sci-fi stories helped to inform the basis of Scientology. Numerous sci-fi luminaries were involved with Hubbard at one point or another. Aldous Huxley received auditing from Hubbard himself. Theodore Sturgeon and A.E. Van Vaught became trained Dianetics auditors. Van Vaught temporarily abandoned writing and became head of the Los Angeles branch of the Hubbard Dianetic Research Foundation. William S. Burroughs actually became a Scientologist for a short period of time. Hubbard had friendships with authors Isaac Asimov, L. Sprague de Camp, and Robert Heinlein. Tom Cruise literally became a poster boy for Scientology and eventually at second in command, consulted on all aspects of policy and planning. Cruise is a big sci-fi fan and has starred in a number of genre movies, including Minority Report, War of the Worlds, and Oblivion. The latter contained extensive narrative, nods toward mind-wiped programmed and cloned super-soldiers, as well as esoteric and Masonic themes and imagery. The extraterrestrial base in Earth orbit is a huge inverted pyramid-like structure, tellingly named the TET, with a red all-seeing eye, serving as the core CPU, uncannily similar to Stanley Kubrick's Hell in 2001, A Space Odyssey. Tom Cruise starred alongside his then-wife, Nicole Kidman, in Stanley Kubrick's final film, Eyes Wide Shut, a film firmly based on secret societies and the power of the elite. Kubrick's daughter, Vivian, has been the Scientologist since 1999. Other noted current Scientologists include Kirstie Alley, who found fame in Star Trek II, Bodhi Elfman, Armageddon, Godzilla, Sliders, and Giovanni Ribisi, Avatar, The X-Files. Other former members include Jeff Conway, Babylon 5, Jason Begg, Quantum Leap, The X-Files, and Neil Gaiman, who wrote, amongst other things, the novels The Sandman and Stardust, episodes of Doctor Who, and Babylon 5, and has a very, very peculiar wife. Finally, Will Smith, star of Independence Day and the Men in Black movies, is also believed to be a Scientologist. In 2007, he donated $122,500 to three Scientology organizations. Following completion of the 2008 film, Hancock, he gave each of the crew a card entitling them to a free personality test at a nearby Scientology center. In 2008, he heavily subsidized a private elementary school, New Village Academy, in Calabasas, renowned for a teaching methodology called Study Technology, developed by L. Ron Hubbard. The school was attended by Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes' daughter, Suri. Will Smith also told Hollywood Access. I was introduced to it by Tom, and I'm a student of world religion. I was raised in a Baptist household. I went to a Catholic school, but the ideas of the Bible are 98% the same ideas of Scientology, 98% the same ideas of Hinduism and Buddhism. There is still a continuation of this discussion, but this video is too long, if you like it, maybe I will continue in the next episode. So, comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.